the butterfly method is um, for some a simpler method to help add fractions that do not have like or common denominators. The important thing or the important difference between the butterfly method and what we've been doing so far with multiplication is that we're finding a common denominator with the butterfly method but not the least common denominator so you'll still have to simplify and um, I'll show you what I mean with that, okay? So let's take a look at the addition, uh, fraction addition problem, 3 sixths plus <clears throat> 3 eighths. I cannot add those because they have different denominators. So rather than trying to find the least common multiple between 6 and 8, I can just um, go ahead and try out the butterfly method. So I can kind of imagine this as a butterfly. And what I'm going to do is I just go ahead and multiply my denominators. So 6 times 8 is 48, and that's going to become our new denominator, okay? And then I'm going to multiply across the wings here to get my numerators to form equivalent fractions. So 6 times 3 is 18, and 3 times 8, we can ignore this plus sign, 3 times 8 is 24. So an equivalent fraction to 3 sixths would be, oh, let's see where we can write this, would be 24 forty eighths. Mm, that's a little bit out of the picture there. And an equivalent fraction for 3 eighths would be 18 40 eighths. Okay? So the reason why, if we look back and think, why did we multiply diagonally? Because if you think, to get to 48, I had to multiply this denominator by 8. And so remember, whatever I have to do to the bottom, I also do to the top. So if I multiplied 6 by 8 to get 48, I also have to multiply 3 by 8 to get um, 24. Same thing for our other fraction. If I have 3 eighths and I'm trying to get to the common denominator of 48, I multiply 8 times 6 to get 48. And since I multiplied the denominator by 6, I also have to multiply the numerator by 6. So 6 times 3 is 18. Okay, so now we have our new addition problem, 24 40 eighths plus 18 48 okay so we do 24 plus 18 so I can think 20 plus 10 is 30 plus 12 more would give me 42 48 and now I know that I can simplify this fraction because both of these numbers can be divided. So this is where we're thinking about our greatest common factor. So if you need more practice with that, I would go back and watch the greatest common factor video. But I know that, let's see here, seven times six is 42 and six times eight is 48. So I think six is the greatest common factor and let's see if that's true. 42 divided by 6 is 7. 48 divided by 6 is 8. And I cannot simplify that any further. So um, before simplifying, our answer would be 42 48. Um, and then when we simplify, we find an equivalent fraction for our answer. So we could say 3 6 plus 3 8 is either the same as 42 48 or 7 8. Let's do a subtraction problem just to see another example real quick. We'll kind of move through it more quickly. <clears throat> Let's try 2 fifths. Let's see. 2 
fifths minus one third. Okay, I'm going to set up my butterfly. So I'll have two fifths on one wing and one third on the other. So I'm going to find a common denominator. Remember, this may not be the least common denominator. That's why we may have to simplify after we find our answer. But I know 5 times 3 is 15. Now I'm going to multiply across the wings to get my numerators so I can make equivalent fractions. So 5 times 1 is 5 and 2 times 3 is 6. So an equivalent fraction for 2 fifths would be 6 fifteenths and an equivalent fraction for 1 third would be 5 fifteenths. So I can rewrite my subtraction problem as 6 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths and that will give me 1 fifteenth. I can't, I don't need to simplify any further because the only common factor now between 1 and 15 is 1. So that's the butterfly method. You can use it to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators.